I will use good day because I don't know from which location are you watching the webinar. And my name is Clara and I will uh, start and uh, finish the webinar today. And thank you for joining us. I will start with some technical stuff. So probably on the right side of your screen, you can see this control panel. Um, all attendees are muted, but it doesn't it doesn't mean we we want you to do not speak with us. Uh, please do it via this uh, question panel. So you can write us uh, questions and please take the opportunity and do it. Uh, this webinar is recorded, so you can afterwards find the recording on uh, our website or on our YouTube channel. Uh, I will introduce uh, myself very briefly. My name is Clara Thiel and I'm a country manager of our uh, Benelux branch. With our, I mean, Idea Statica. And uh, from this reason, I would like to uh, welcome a colleague of mine, our product engineer, Chris Riemanns. Hello, Chris. Hi, thanks for having me. Okay, I would like to uh, welcome as well our nice guests. And it's uh, not Daniel Sommers from Victor because there was some uh, change. So therefore, I would like to uh, invite, uh, sorry, welcome Ananda. Hello, Ananda. Clara, nice to be here. Thank you. And I would like to welcome as well our very nice guest, uh, Wishart Braun from uh, WSP. Hello, Wishart. How are you doing today? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you for being here. Okay, nice. So let's go. Uh, what you will see today, it's a, a brief, uh, let's say, presentation and information from uh, Ananda from uh, Victor Company. Uh, short uh, presentation from Idea Statica, how you can automate our applications. And then a very interesting uh, case study, like real project, which was done by WSP company by Visharp. So, and then there will be space for uh, Q&A. So, as I mentioned already, please uh, write us up your questions. Uh, if we will not answer them uh, live, we will send you uh we will send you answer via email so all the questions will be answered so do as i mentioned take the opportunity to do it uh only few sentences about idea statica as you probably know uh, it's a company which uh, uh, was established in the czech republic uh, after uh, or let's say since year 2009, uh, we became quite a global company. So it means now we, there is more than 7,000 desktop licenses around the world in 100 uh, uh, countries in the world. It means that there is a kind of small city of 30,000 users of Idea Statica. Uh, the software results are, of course, validated by universities because we do kind of really cool research and, of course, very, very like high quality research. Uh, we have a lot of BIM links, so we are connected to another software. Uh, now we have more than uh, 100 employees, uh, 50 plus resellers and also branches here in uh, Benelux in the Netherlands, but also in uh, Germany, UK and uh, uh, USA, and we have opened quite recently new office in, uh, in Singapore. So yeah, it's a very brief information about the company and our aim is to make engineers sleep peacefully. And this is uh, the beginning of very short introduction to go to the point. So, uh, I will pass the word to Ananda, and for now we will turn off the cameras so you can really focus on uh, on content. So Ananda, the stage is yours. And so, Clara, yes. Let's so yeah, 
a second to put the presentation on screen. Oh, yes. welcome. We can see. Oh. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Ananda. Uh, I'm a structural engineer and have uh, more than a decade experience in automating all kinds of engineering processes. So just to give you an example, uh, we're working in the automation of the structural design of the world's longest submerged tunnel, which is an 18 kilometer tunnel connecting Denmark to Germany. And today I want to introduce you to Victor. But before we do, I would like to ask you a question. And it's a simple question, so take maybe 10, 30 seconds to answer it. And launch it now. Question is basically, uh, until what extent are you automating part of your workflow? So take 30 seconds for this, please. Again, 10 seconds left. Great, so we have uh, a lot of results and I will come back to them in a few seconds. So can you see the presentation now? It's still the result of the poll. So the result, oh, you can see the result at the moment. Yes? Can you see the presentation now? Yes. Cool. Yeah, so Said, I, I work for a company called Victor. Uh, and uh, we have plenty of years of experience in automating workflows. And what I saw, and also my colleagues saw in, in engineering projects in general, is that although we engineers love to think uh, our work is very unique, deep in our hearts, we know that uh, there's quite some repetitive work to be done. So updating the 3D models of your FEM software, um, copying and pasting results from one software to the other, uh, updating reports, uh, all that kind of stuff, that it's not really motivating. So that's one uh, thing we, we saw. Uh, on the other side, um, we use all kinds of data. So loads, soil conditions, materials, properties, and it's not always easy uh, to get the right data, no? especially because this data is constantly changing. So if you look into an old report, you see the loads, you're not very sure where those loads are coming from. And sometimes in projects, mistake happens because you don't use the right information. Uh, next to that, what is uh, obviously very natural in a project is that requirements change. They change the whole time. So there we go again. We can update our models again, update the calculations, iterate uh, continuously until finding the solution, update the reports again, and after a few weeks, maybe it changes again, so more repetitive work. And to solve that, we're creating digital tools. And if we look at the pool, uh, a big part of you uh, have, until some extent, uh, applied uh, digital tools uh, to solve uh, this automation problem. You know? So you create Excel sheets of Python scripts of whatever to help you uh, get rid of those repetitive tasks. Uh, but sometimes when creating those tools, uh, we also face some challenges. For example, how can we integrate different sources of data of different software packages? So that limits our capacity to create really professional tools uh, that can automate maybe the whole workflow. And when we create those tools, like say an Excel sheet of a Python script, um, how do we share that? So can we share that tool with everyone in our organization? Is everyone able to understand that tool? And does everyone have the Python skills? Is it user friendly enough? Of let's say you have a version of the tool, uh, you find some mistakes or you improve it in some way, and then you share it again. Are you sure that your colleagues are really using the latest version of this tool? So if you recognize one of these problems and you think, yeah, this happening to me, well, then you have uh, you are in the right place because that's what we stand for. So we stand for automating the boring so that you can really engineer the awesome and enjoy this engineering part and your creative side to, to come to really good solutions. Um, so yeah, what is Vector not? So Vector is, is a platform, first of all, and it enables engineers like you to build and share user-friendly web applications. 
to automate your workflows at the end. And I can imagine that some people say, hey, creating a web application sounds complicated, and it's true. So traditionally, creating a web application means uh, that you need a team of experts with have all kinds of uh, knowledge, specific knowledge, you have a script about uh, web infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, the back end, the front end, uh, but not with Victor. With Victor, we make it really easy to make those web applications. So we enable a single engineer uh, to make this web application using nothing but Python. And Python is the most uh, well-known uh, programming language uh, in the world at the moment. So it's very popular uh, between engineers. Also, a lot of universities are giving Python. Uh, and for those who know Python, uh, it works very similar to any Python library. And I want to show this uh, very briefly at the end of the, the presentation. So next to that, uh, we enable you to integrate different software packages. So Idea Statica with other software packages, so you can automate a bigger part of your workflow. The third part is that we provide uh, a platform uh, where it all comes together, in which you can find the collection of all your digital tools. So you as a team, as a company can work here, you can create different tools and you can manage access to the tools, see all kinds of statistics on how the tools are used. Each app also has a database, so you can keep uh, track of your design uh, and your design changes too, and different projects. So you can do everything from here. So to summarize, uh, at one side, we enable you to make web applications five uh, times faster than you will normally do. We enable you to integrate a bigger portion of your workflow so that you can run hundreds of thousands of calculations to get to the best design. And we provide you an enterprise ready platform and where you can manage uh, your apps. So who uses Victor? So Victor is mostly used by the biggest engineering and construction firms in the world, but also by students, professors, also with freelancers that are creating apps to generate new revenue streams, uh, small companies, so it's really for everyone. We're a product uh, used in, in, in all kinds of clients. Um, and just to give you a few examples of what you can do, um, I want to mention the, the longest uh, submerged tunnel in the world, which will connect Germany with, with Denmark. Um, and what's the benefit for them? Well, they, they have a tunnel of 18 kilometers and they have eight, uh, 90 tunnel sections. And of course, all conditions are different across the tunnel. So having a tool that automates the design enables them to really optimize each section to the max. And because they have so many sections and so many load cases, they have so much data that for them having the central uh, single source of truth where you can see which is the right data, uh, it's a big benefit for them besides, of course, getting an optimal design. Another example is Vinci Constructions, a French construction company. Um, they have to put cranes or building buildings like anywhere, everyone knows. And uh, those cranes are on foundations and they created a tool uh, that really calculates the foundations of, of those cranes from A to Z. So you put the input conditions, this is the load, how far you should get with this load, and it calculates the foundation, uh, does all the structural analysis, it generates a report, it checks uh, regarding the regulations, it also generates a report automatically, uh, it makes the drawings also automatically. So it does really all you need to do to create those, uh, to build those uh, foundations uh, automatically. And they save on a yearly basis uh, 300 days of engineering uh, hours, of uh, 300 days of engineering. So a full year in a year. Uh, this is a bit of a different case. So we have McDermott, which uh, is very active in the, in the processing industry. And they have all kinds of like piping drawings, which are quite complex. And they train it an artificial intelligence model to analyze those drawings, uh, to see errors in the drawings. Um, and artificial intelligence can be a quite complex topic. So it's not something everyone can uh, do. But because they put it in uh, a Victor application, which is really user friendly, they democratized this knowledge. And now everyone in the company is able to use it. And they're able to save many engineering hours and are able to get all the errors out of, of the drawings. Um, this is also a construction company. They made a tool that uh, also automates the design of a dike. Uh, in this case, they're using it for a big dike reinforcement in the Netherlands. Uh, about 18 kilometers of dikes 
And because they're able to calculate that many scenarios and really optimize each section from 100 meters, so they divide it in sections of 100 meters, uh, they say they have saved like hundreds of millions in, in materials and truck movements and, and everything. So it's, it's a big, big, big impact in, in this project. Um, so you may be wondering how uh, easy is it to make a web application? So I want to show you very briefly how to make an app. Uh, and the app, I say, is made for Python. And if you don't know Python, well, bear with me. So normally, you see that the amount of lines. Normally, creating a web application, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of, of lines of code. And in this case, uh, we have an empty app. Uh, if I go to my browser, uh, this is my app. So there's nothing in my app, basically. Um, and when I will start adding lines of code to my um, to my Python script, uh, it will update automatically. Now I don't know I'll code by Hertz, so I always use our documentation. And for example, you can see that you can add uh, all kind of input parameters where users can provide inputs, uh, and you can show results in all kind of ways. So you can show it like graphs, geometry, maps images you name it so there's a, there are many options but let's let's take a map for instance i will just copy paste this code here so the app should update automatically and i will go there I have a map, so it was quite quick, as you see. So just a few lines of code, I already have a map. And let's say I now want to add a 3D model, for example, just to give you an example, let's go back to the docs, choose a 3D model. This code too. Just copy this code. Uh, the apps should update automatically again. I have a go there. So there's a mistake somewhere. Let me see. I'm not able to spot it right now, and I think we, we don't have that much time to, to show it. Basically, the, the purpose of the demo was just to show you that with a few lines of code, you could uh, just uh, create all kind of views. And I think that the nice part will be shown uh, by Richard, of course, uh, which uh, will show you um, an application, uh, in real case application. So uh, the last thing I want to say is that if you want to uh, use uh, Victor, you can go to our website, uh, you can also use the QR code, and you can start using this for free. You can just download and start using it for free. And if you uh, want us to think along, so we can, uh, you can just uh, book a demo with us and we can really think along with you about the project and we can uh, start something together, which is a very good option. And that's something we will come back to uh, at the end of uh, this presentation. So with that said, I want to um, yeah, sh um, give the word to uh, Chris. So um, he will uh, talk about uh, Idea Statica. Yes, thank you, Anand. I hope you can all see my screen. And um, maybe you can switch off your webcam as well, uh, Anand. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, thanks for that uh, very interesting presentation, uh, Anand. Uh, again, my name is uh, Chris Riemens. I'm product engineer at Idea Statica. And on behalf of Idea Statica, I would like to present now some things about uh, our applications and uh, how they relate to automated workflows. Uh, so first I'll 
going to give you a short introduction about our applications for concrete and steel. And then I will discuss some things related to uh, reinforced concrete design automation and then about steel connection design automation. For those who are still a bit unfamiliar with Idea Statica, let me give you a quick introduction about uh, our software. Uh, so what is Idea Statica? Well, in a nutshell, it's an engineering software solution for the structural design and checking of steel connections, concrete sections, concrete D regions, and critical members. With respect to our solutions for concrete, it can be said that we offer several applications for concrete. Uh, we will focus mostly on the uh, uh, RCS application, uh, which is meant for designing and code checking of reinforced concrete sections. And this is the application that is also used in the case study with uh, Victor and WSP, and which I will give a bit more information about later. Uh, but it's good to know that we also have other applications for concrete as well, uh, namely the detail application for modeling concrete walls, beams, and details using a 2D plane stress model, and it uses a full nonlinear analysis. We have the beam application for designing and code checking of reinforced concrete or pre-stressed beams, it can be single span or multi-span beams, including time-dependent analysis. We have the member application specifically suited for buckling analysis of concrete beams, frames, and columns. And then we also have the checkbot application for establishing BIM links with other FEA software packages and to import external models into IDEA. Important to note is that uh, the automated workflows discussed in this webinar are not directly related to the use of these uh, BIM links or the checkbot application, so these are separate workflows. Uh, so even though the focus of this webinar is more about automation uh, with the RCS uh, application, uh, we do also want to highlight our solutions for steel as well. Uh, as they are also increasingly becoming more suitable to implement in automated workflows. Uh, so from all of the applications we offer for steel, uh, IDEA Statica is most well known for its uh, steel connection application, and this is our most used application for designing and checking of steel connections. Uh, but again, it's good to know we have several other applications for steel as well. Uh, we have, for example, also the member application for steel, meant for analyzing the buckling behavior of beams, frames, and columns. Then we also have the checkbot application, uh, which again is the application meant for importing models from other software packages. Um, then we also have some free applications, namely the connection light application and the viewer application. These are cloud-based solutions, mainly to quickly view a connection model and transfer information about a uh, connection between different, um, different parties. Given our solutions, we are convinced that IDEA uh, Statica is a must-have for all our uh, structural related projects. Now, when it comes to other structural analysis software, we know there are many different software packages out there. Uh, instead of competing with them, we want to work together with them. Therefore, we want to make it easy to link with other software tools and software packages, um, on the one hand, in a straightforward way through our checkbot application, uh, but on the other hand, also in more advanced ways by letting our applications be implemented in these uh, automated workflows on platforms such as uh, Victor. Now, Richard will later tell you more about their automated workflow for uh, reinforced concrete design uh, using our uh, RCS application. Uh, but I would like to first tell you a little bit more about our RCS application itself. The RCS application is basically a tool to perform 1D section checks of reinforced composite and pre-stressed cross sections. Uh, the calculation follows the assumption that plane sections remain plane, and it provides checks for ULS and SLS. Implemented in RCS are four codes. Three of them are based on the Eurocode and one on the Swiss norm. Uh, countries where the Eurocode is applicable, uh, yeah, they might have quite big differences based on their national annex. Therefore, for the codes that are uh, based on the Eurocode, we also have implemented nine different national annexes for you to choose from. Uh, RCS offers a whole range of code checks. Uh, for ULS, that involves uh, checks for the capacity uh, on bending and axial force, shear, torsion, interaction of internal forces, fatigue, shear and composite joints, and fire resistance. For SLS, it can perform stress limitation checks, checks on decompression condition, crack, uh, crack width checks, and checks on brittle failure. Uh, so regarding reinforced concrete design automation, what do we mean with it? Uh, well, in our eyes, it is a process that helps you get from your initial cross-section design to your final, more optimized cross-section design that you are happy with in the least amount of time and the least amount of boring mechanic mechanical uh, repetitive work. Uh, 
uh, you don't want to waste your time retyping values and, and recreating models by hand. You want to focus more on the uh, creative aspects. So I want to give you a little bit more information about the basics of, of what is happening behind the scenes when you uh, create some automated workflow uh, with RCS. Um, but to do this, yeah, we cannot stay working anymore in the ordinary graphical user interface of RCS. Rather, we have to work with what is called an IDEA open model or IOM. Uh, what is IOM? Uh, IOM is an open source uh, C-sharp framework and can describe structures in a way that Idea Statica can understand it. Uh, IOM basically defines uh, a complete model representation and contains all the information about your model. It can describe a model meant for our RCS application, but it can also describe models meant for our concrete detail application, the steel connection application, and our checkbot application. Uh, so again, IOM basically defines a complete model representation, uh, and in the context of uh, an IOM for RCS, it contains things like project data, materials, the geometry, the section, reinforcements, uh, internal forces, etc., etc. An IOM can be saved as an XML file, which you can open with any uh, text editor. Uh, and moreover, you don't need to have Idea Statica installed in order to create and open an IOM. Uh, so for more specific details about IOM, we do refer you to our Idea Statica GitHub page. Uh, but how can we create an IOM? Well, we can create it via a script, uh, for example, in C Sharp or in Python. Uh, and on our GitHub page, we have several examples of such scripts and you will see step-by-step step how it is built up uh, and running the script will lead uh, to this, the creation of the IOM, which you can then save as an XML file. Um, so then if you have your IDEA open model, what's next? Well, we will need to use the RCS API to further handle the IOM. The RCS API is basically the gateway to IDEA Statica. It includes classes that allow uh, for communication with and controlling of Idea Statica applications, but also classes that provide um, Idea Statica services to other applications. The source code can be found on our GitHub page, and um, yeah, it can be called using Python or other languages, uh, and this does require an installation of Idea Statica. Uh, the RCS API can then be used to run uh, a calculation on the uh, created IOM and generate and save an Idea, IDEA RCS file out of it. Uh, you know these files very well. These are the, the basic IDEA RCS app project files. Uh, and the RCS API can be further used then to extract results from that. Uh, even though Idea Statica needs to be installed, you don't need to have it opened in order for the RCS API to run the analysis and extract uh, results. Um, and so here I have a quick example of such a script uh, that can be used to create a um, uh, IOM. Uh, it contains all the information for material properties, etc., but also things like calculation settings and what kind of results you want. And if you run the script, um, that will take a few seconds, but you will see that uh, the script will create also this XML file, which you can open in any uh, text editor. This is basically your model uh, uh, representation. It can also um, create the IDEA RCS file itself, uh, which you can uh, open, I have it here. And you'll see that basically this is just another way of creating the model um, through IOM. Uh, and yeah, you can also save uh, IDEA RCS file out of it, including the results of this cross section. And this allows for the possibility, of course, to create many different variants through a script instead of doing it manually uh, by hand uh, in the ordinary user interface. All right, so let me just close this. Um, so yeah, then the next step would be to use the results of your analysis as input to update your model and recalculate um, to optimize your cross-section. Now, unfortunately, we are not yet at the stage where we can update the RCS file without using uh, IOM, like a direct API but our developers are working on it. Uh, so in the current workflow, you would need to recreate the RC file, RCS file every time with a new IOM, and it re would require more scripting. Uh, nevertheless, if you're really interested in this uh, and you want to set up such a workflow, uh, you can always contact us or the guys from Victor, for example, to help you set up your uh, workflow. Uh, so next, we do want to highlight some new features related to steel connection design automation. Uh, now, in a webinar given last year, 
um, we oh sorry. So when we talk about steel connection design automation, it is a bit similar to the concrete design uh, automation, but in this case, the process uh, would be how to get from your global structural model to a connection design that uh, you are happy with. Again, in the least amount of time and the least amount of boring repetitive work. Uh, now, in a webinar given last year, we go through that whole workflow for steel connections where automation was also achieved by using uh, IOM and API, uh, where the design of the steel connection is optimized. Um, the API for steel connection application is a bit further developed compared to that for uh, concrete, so there, there's more possibilities here, uh, but time does not permit me to go through this whole workflow again here in, uh, in detail. We simply want to refer you to check out that webinar that is available on our website and on our YouTube page. Uh, finally, uh, I do want to show now a feature that we, we do quickly like to go through and might be more accessible for the regular structural engineer who's maybe not so much into programming. Uh, and uh, this is called the developer mode in the connection application. Uh, so the basic idea is that in the developer mode, we can make use of these uh, custom defined parameters use them in expressions and uh, link them to certain model properties. And then we can automatically change those properties of the model uh, in a parametric way. Uh, so I want to quickly show you a small demo of this. So I have here uh, the steel connection application open. I have here some uh, yeah, quite simple model of a beam connected to a column. And uh, basically, uh, if I have this developer mode uh, activated, which can be done through the, uh, the preference tab here at the bottom, through advanced settings. This step opens and now I can create parameters. So for example, here I will uh, give the name H. Uh, that could be, for example, the height of uh, this cross section. I can give it some, uh, some value. Uh, so 0 0.3 meters. And then I can link this um, parameter to a model property. For example, the, uh, the height of this cross section and then I can uh, play around with it. Uh, so I can increase the height, for example, and uh, automatically the uh, cross-section changes. Now, uh, in order to save some time, I'm gonna show you a model that I already pre-prepared with uh, some more parameters. Um, so I have here, for example, the parameter for the height of the cross-section, the spacing of these uh, bolts, uh, the amount of bolts, and then uh, from that comes a definition for the row, the bolt row definition, because what I wanted to achieve was uh, when I change the height, automatically uh, the fin plate increases and the amount of bolts as well, right? So that's the basic idea. You can make your model um, parametric in this, uh, this nice way. All right, so that was basically the developer mode in uh, the connection application. Uh, for further information about the developer mode and also a reference guide for all the possible expressions, do check out our uh, GitHub page. All right, and that was the end of my presentation, and uh, I would like to hand it over now to Bichert, who's going to talk about his uh, case study. Thank you, Chris, for your presentation. All right. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Vishet Bron. Uh, I currently work at WSP. Um, I started my uh, career as structural engineer uh, because I have a deep passion for creating designs, and I like to see them um, come into life. Um, and what drew me to this field was the perfect blend of creativity and I also really like calculating. However, I soon realized that uh, I'm not the kind of person who likes to do a, a task over and over again, and I can easily become quite bored. So um, I really delved into automation and programming, um, and I dived so deep that I eventually um, switched my career to uh, being an application developer. Um, so my primary goal in my day-to-day -day job is to develop applications that enhance the work experience for my colleagues. And I 
really like to make their tasks easier and more enjoyable. So I would like to thank you for joining me today and I would like to introduce our SLAP reinforcement tool. Um, it is a collaborative project involving not only WSP but also Heimans and Tau uh, and I will uh, delve into more details about that collaboration shortly and share some insights. So what I want to like to uh, tell today, um, I'm going to give you some context about the problems we're facing as structural engineers. Uh, we're going to see the goal, what we want to reach with this application. And after that, I want to go through the manual process of what we like to automate. Um, then some more about the solution and the collaboration model we used. Uh, some challenges we faced while developing this tool uh, concerning the IOM of IDEA and uh, last but not least a demo. So uh, today we are facing a lot of uh, challenges as structural engineers. Um, not only do we need to have the structure to be safer and also more robust, but also we are facing uh, more pressing env environmental concerns. And that results in a global focus on reducing material usage and minimizing env environmental impact. So the choices we make as a structural engineer matter more than ever. And also, uh, the digital capabilities are expanding and are enabling us to create more sophisticated design methods. Um, and with that in mind, we crafted an application that helps us to uh, reduce material, uh, material, material usage for uh, construction of concrete slabs. So that's, that's the context. So. Uh, what do we want to create is uh, we want to have, design an optimal Reebok configuration for an arbitrary finite element slab, calculate with some kind of finite element uh, package. Um, and to do that, we use the nodal forces. And for each node, we want to calculate the ideal Reebok configuration. Uh, and we have to take into account that we want to uh, calculate for the ULS, so the ultimate limit state, for crack width. And we want to keep in mind that we have bending moments and a normal force. Um, and in total, we want to present that uh, result in an insightful manner so that everybody understands what we're calculating. Um, and and now I would like to go through the steps to reach this goal. And we're just going to do like we didn't have software to do these tasks. Well, not software. We do have software, but not uh, software to do to link these tasks. And I hope that uh, this will make clear why it is desirable to create a, a, an application to do this. So the first step would be and I think most structural engineer once did it, did this for some kind of project, is to uh, calculate the flexible capacity of a cr cross section. So, what you would do, could do, is uh, you uh, open your IDEA Statica, uh, go to an RCS mode, and uh, define some kind of cross section, and you will input some kind of forces. And uh, for the ULS, it's quite easy. You can look up what uh, the capacity is of the cross section. But for the crack width, you have to iterate. And this process is quite intricate. It involves iterative input. And you have to check unit checks over and over. And after that, you have to keep some kind of list or Excel sheet and write down all the capacity values. So I believe that's quite time consuming and prone to human error. Uh, one of the reasons I became engineer so was I like calculating. 
so this is calculate but then again uh, do i think this process is boring yeah it's quite boring and is it error prone yeah it is very error prone what brings us to the next step so we have some kind of list our database say with capacities and we want to uh, match that to our finite element model and we have to extract those forces from that model so in this case we are using SIA engineer but you can uh, apply this to a uh, different software um, and you could what you could do is set some upper boundaries of your finite element uh, model and then check from where is a uh, are the boundaries exceeded and thereby you know where you can apply a certain rebar configuration um, it's quite demanding to do this because we have four internal design forces mxd plus mxd minus uh, mid plus and mid minus but also we have to do it again for uls and for the uh, uh, sls calculations so i can tell myself again i really like calculating but do i think this process is boring well yes i think it's quite boring and i think you can make an error or two while doing this so that would be step two and the last step finally we come to the presentation of our results so we have to show the results of these calculations in some way and i believe this is not a small task so i believe we would use uh, microsoft word and we could what we could do is paste images from the finite element software and keep in mind that we have two directions x and y two result classes as less than uls and two sides top and the bottom so imagine you would like to uh, investigate five rebar configurations that would result in well you can do the math but it's 40 images so I think we've practically uh, pushed the boundaries of what can be considered what is truly insightful for you or for a colleague or for your client. And from these images, we have to extract some kind of envelope rebar configuration of what we want to apply on a model or on our drawings. So again, I tell myself, I like calculating, but will this even work? Well, I don't think it will work. And even if it works, it is quite a lot of work and a boring task to do it. So there must be a better way, I believe. And there is. And not only WSP thought so, also Tau and Heimann thought we can do this better. We could do this in another way. So this idea is uh, pitched in what's called the digital engineering community. It's an initiative in the Netherlands where uh, competing companies can collaborate on certain tools which are considered non-intellectual or non-intellectual property. And we like to work together rather than independently uh, creating our own tools, but all the same. Uh, I can refer you to the website which is stated here. Um, and also we chose to develop this on the Victor platform and the main aim is to make non-coding users also benefit from this uh, development. So that's about the deck and the solution. Uh, while developing, some things we, uh, we stumbled upon was that IDEA IOM doesn't really support one-way slab cross-sections. Uh, the main reason is that you can only uh add single reinforcement bars uh you can't insert area coefficients so uh you can't really make uh, bar layers so what we did is we calculated the least common multiple for a rebar configurations and we uh, uh applied some kind of uh, fictitious width to a, a cross section um also, a challenge was that iteratively calculating the flexible capacity of a cross-section using IDEA uh, in combination with a web application is quite 
time consuming. So what we did is we implemented a custom estimation algorithm. It basically is just the same calculation as IDRCS does. Uh, in most cases, it is 100% uh, accurate. And thereby we are em eliminating a lot of iterations using uh, the internet, basically. And also uh, historic uh, calculate results are stored inside a database and you can look it up and you can use it every time. So if there is a, some kind of a configuration with a, a, a slab thickness that is uh, calculated before, you can just look it up. And uh, the case that what will happen if a new version of Idea Statica will calculate things differently. So let's say we have a new euro code and things will change. So we had to implement a way to remove historical re results from our database to keep the tool flexible and correct. So that's a bit about the challenges. And we would, then we get to the demo. So I will open up my browser and we're getting right into the tool. So this is in Victor and you are able to create a project uh, folder. It's more, not, nothing more than that. And in that folder, you can upload a CM model. Uh, in this case, it's an XML and it contains all the data concerning nodal forces. And if I open it, I should be able to see a 3D uh, representation of the model. So you can visually check if what you uploaded, uploaded was what you intended to upload. So you have the way to check and you can uh, hover around it and see what the uh, uh, plate names are, slab names, sorry. And after that, for each slab, you can input parameters like, uh, well, the thickness will come from the CA model, so it will be read in, uh, read in automatically, but you are able to play with it. So if you want to uh, just um, neglect that, uh, the thickness is also important for your finite element um, uh, calculations, but you can play with it in a way that you can get to a more economical uh, design. And also you can import of a, uh, insert your environmental um, uh, conditions and uh, crack with um, limitations. Uh, after inserting that, you can define what Reba configuration you want to investigate for two directions and the top and the bottom. So the tool is Dutch, but I hope, I hope it is uh, clear what everything is, but this is the, the diameter uh, bar distance. So you can select one of the choices here. And based on that, you can create a, a nice view where every node is uh, calculated for what is the most ideal configuration. So I will show it here. So you get some kind of warning because actually I did something wrong. It's just a warning. You get a result, but there's something uh, odd about your input. And you get a nice view of what is actually your uh, preferred repo configuration. It's all very interactive. It's quite quick. So if I go on a node, you will see what is the repo configuration you want, but also what is the unity check at that point. Um, and uh, you can see where there's not, the, the capacity is insufficient and you can, well, reason about what you want to do with that. You also see the maximum available capacity based on your choices you have. And we can switch between top and bottom where you will see some different results, of course, concerning your ideal reinforcement uh, configuration. Uh, nice thing also is that you can turn on and off some layers to have a better view of what you're actually doing. Yeah, so this is a representation of the forces in C engineer. So that's about that design. Um, after that, you really would like to check, well, nice and I see a nice view and everything I think is working, but I should, I would like to download my idea file. So all the applied reinforcement um, uh, 
configuration can be downloaded as an IDEA RCS file. So it takes a little bit time to create the IDEA model. But after that, you should be able to download the file and open it in your RCS software. So here it is. And hip hip hooray. I've downloaded all my uh, viable uh, rebar configurations and if everything goes wrong all the unity checks should be around 100 um, so there's a, a a numerical uh difference sometimes so here uh sometimes you will see a, a, a difference of like one percent but that's all manageable so then i come back to my earlier questions. So do I like calculating? Well, yes. And if I can do it like this, in such a nice way, in such a nice representation of my results, do I think this job is boring? Well, no, I, w I would like I had to have this tool. So I want to, that's what I wanted to show you. And I want to return it back to Clara. Wow, Richard, thank you very much. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. I will change the presentation. Yes, because now there is a time for Q&A. We already got a few questions, but before we jump into your into the answers for your questions, uh i would like to launch uh, one more quite uh, i believe easy and quick uh poll uh and it's uh it's quite easy it's just if you want to if you are interested if you want to know more about uh, about these platforms about automation about uh oh, like how you can integrate uh, victor or idea into into your workflows and yeah it will be also a message for us if we should follow this topic but for now i can say 84 84 percent percent of people want to receive or not receive yeah let's say receive information about about uh, automation and these possibilities so thank you very much for this uh quick uh, quick poll and now yeah. let's jump to the let's uh jump to the uh let's jump to the uh, questions and answers. Here is one question for Richard. And this question is, um, it's a nice app, but besides uh, rectangle shaped floors, can you also calculate a complex form? So Richard, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, yes, you can. And I'm We'll, we'll like to show you even because I happen to have a model. Uh, so, so we're back in the application, and I will go back uh, into a model, and I have a model. It's called Borrelglas in Dutch. I believe it is like a shot glass. Uh, it was some client example of what was a complex shape. So if you see here, it's a really curved 
a round structure with this you can consider quite complex and let's check if i inputted everything yeah i did so i should be able to do the same for this shape also um so like you see here um if i turn off the forces so it's no problem whatsoever and still even though it's a quite complex shape it's rather quick to uh, create these kind of views so i hope that answers the question that well almost every shape is actually possible to uh, calculate so no problem wow oh okay perfect Wow, so now it's only about our imagination. Thank you, Richard. Uh, one more question. I think this is for Chris. Uh, in the new developer mode, in the connection app, mm -hmm. uh, can you also work with uh, condition expressions like uh, if statements? Uh, yeah, that's possible. Uh, maybe I can also show that because uh, I also had a, another model based on this this model um, where I added even more parameters where I include this sort of if statements. Uh, and so now also the width of the, the fin plate and uh, the amount of bolts, the rows of bolts next to each other can also be dependent on this first parameter. So if I increase the height uh, long enough, then uh, at a certain point, it exceeds a certain threshold and uh, it will automatically widen the, uh, the fin plate and add additional bolts. So that's included in here with this uh, if statements and these parameters then are coupled to um, the, the, the model property of the width of the fin plate and uh, the bolt rows here. And so this way, uh, the possibilities are, are really endless to make your uh, model parametric. Amazing, Chris. Thank you very much for the, the answer and also for the presentation. I will take back the presenter, but only yeah for uh, really few seconds. Uh, as I already mentioned, this webinar has been recorded, so uh, it will be available on uh, our website and on our YouTube channel. Uh, you will get short survey after the ending of the session. So Phil, we will be happy for your feedback, of course. If you want to try out, you can get a trial version on uh, our website. And I believe you can find something similar on uh, Victor website. So thank you all for watching. And yeah, we can wait. Definitely, it looks like uh, this is an uh, interesting topic. So we will we will follow it in the future. Automation is quite or seems to be quite useful. Thank you very much for watching, and you can contact us uh, later on as well. And as I mentioned, we will answer your questions. So thank you very much. Have a nice day and um, a lot of success with your projects and with with your automation. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>